but carefully to listen to the true snake in clip six. Look, uh, the, the media uh, is pursuing ratings. This is a legitimate news story. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, it's up to the media to make a determination about how they want to cover things. Uh, there is no doubt that the actions of ISIL are designed to amplify uh, their power and the threat that they pose. That helps them recruit. That uh, adds in the twisted thoughts of uh, some young person that they might want to uh, have carry out an action, that somehow they're part of a larger movement. So I think that the American people absorb that. Really? The American people absorb that? <clears throat> well, there's only one answer to that, Mr. Lincoln, and that's to put a strict restriction on the press and arrest journalists. I mean, after all, your mentor Lincoln did that during the Civil War. Just arrest journalists, Mr. Lincoln. That's after your vacation. Okay, my friends. There is no debate on the li on the liberal side. It's all a f it's a sham. There's no candidacy except Hillary's. Sanders and O'Malley are stooges. Sanders has less of a chance to win than my dog Teddy does. My dog Teddy would get more votes on a write-in ballot than uh, than this idiot Sanders will ever get. He's a stooge. He works for Clinton. It's to make her look less crazy. That's all. O'Malley is nothing. O'Malley is an empty suit, a complete empty suit, a muscle-bound empty suit who stands up there like a dunce. O'Malley stands there to make normal straight white males look stupider than they already are. So what would you like to talk about? Well, I know what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to play the tape now of the young girl who survived the rapes. Fire away. I don't think we'll finish it right here on the Savage Nation. In a building there, there were thousands of Yazidi families and children who were exchanged as gifts. One of these people came up to me. He wanted to take me. I looked down at the floor. I was absolutely petrified. When I looked up, I saw a huge man. He was like a monster. I cried, I cried out. I said, I'm too young and you're huge. He hit me, he kicked me and beat me. And a few minutes later, another man came up to me. I still was looking at the floor. I saw that he was a little bit smaller. I begged him, I implored him for him to take me. I was incredibly scared of the first man. The man who took me asked me to change religion. I refused. Then he asked me, oh, my hand in marriage, so to speak. I said that I was ill because most women uh, were menstruating because they were so scared. A few days later, he uh, forced me to get dressed and put my makeup on, and then that terrible night, he did it. He forced me to serve as part of his military faction. He humiliated me every day. He uh, forced me to wear uh, clothes that didn't cover my body. I was tortured. I decided to flee one of the guards. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. Talk radio for the thinking person. Home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. If you've been watching television for the last uh, month, all you've been seeing, all you've been hearing about is uh, these guys with masks or black flags who are potentially coming to get you. And... So I understand why people are concerned about it, and this is a serious situation, but uh, I, what is important is for people to uh, recognize that uh, the, the power, Dad. the strength of the United States okay. and its allies uh, are not threatened. No, 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 no. That didn't happen last two weeks ago in San Bernardino. The other Muslim attacks never really happened because it didn't touch them. It's not happening. And the band played on. So <clears throat> we have a legitimate problem here, which is either a president in denial or a president working for the other side. It doesn't really matter. 
because the end results are, are actually the same. Listen to clip seven again. This is his speech to National Obama Radio. It used to be known as NPR. It was always far to the left. The Stooges who worked for NPR. If we had a legitimate Republican Party, they should have stripped all funding for NPR. All of it. They're nothing but propagandists for the far left agenda. NOR, which is NOR, which is the new acronym for NPR, National Obama Radio. Listen to clip seven. There is a legitimate criticism uh, of what I've been doing and our administration's been doing in the sense that we uh, haven't, you know, on a regular basis, I think, described all the work that we've been doing uh, for more than a year now to defeat ISIL. Did you hear that double talk? In other words, he hasn't used enough propaganda. He hasn't gotten the stooges from NOR to disseminate his lying message. You know, if there ever is a time that we regain this country and regain this government, and there is a people's tribunal, people in the media should be called before this tribunal for having conducted this crime against the truth, crime against humanity. For while the rapes and the murders and the kidnappings go on, we're doing nothing about it except, I guess, feeding the other side. And he says he has the best strategy to defeat ISIS. Why do you think he's giving such a speech before going off on another expensive vacation? Because he knows he's in trouble. He knows that all thinking people can look right through him. And it doesn't matter what their race is. It doesn't matter what their sexual orientation is. People are people. <clears throat> and most people are smart enough to look right through this man. And they know he's a danger to their survival. They feel it. <clears throat> they can sense it. They can attack the Republican candidates all they want. But there's one reason and one reason alone that Trump is thriving. The word is Muslim. That's the word. The M word. No matter what they say about him, he's the only one willing to take this head on. And I want to bring up this issue of Muslims again. In a time of war, when it is Muslims who are committing virtually all the acts of terror in this country, why would you bring in millions of unvetted Muslims, mainly of military age, not women and children from Syria, when we know that they've stolen passports, they've boasted they're going to infiltrate Europe and America. What sane president would permit this to go on other than an insane president to somewhere for the other side? But I made the point over and over again. But it gets even better. I'm sorry. It gets better. The madness continues. <clears throat> the megalomania, the psychopathic behavior is evidenced over and over again. I try to warn you and stop the coming civil war, which I will mention again. It's the greatest gift you can give for Christmas, not because it's going to put 10 cents in my pocket, but because it's going to put two cents worth of sense in someone's brain. I want you to listen now to Nero in clip 10. Uh, I think if you're talking about the specific virulence of some of the opposition uh, uh, directed towards me, then uh, you know that may be explained by the particulars of, of uh, who I am. Here we go. Uh, on the man. other hand, I'm not the unique to that. Uh, you know, I, I always try to yeah, uh, no, remind you're, people you're that such a victim. Goodness, you're such you a know, victim. You look at what they said about Jefferson or Lincoln or mm -hmm. FDR. Uh, finding mm -hmm. reasons not to like a president. That's <laughs> that's a uh, you know a, a well uh, traveled path here in this country. Now, look, notice how he wraps himself up in legitimate criticism of policies of previous presidents, uh, none of whom were accused of being working for the enemy, so far as I know. I never knew that anyone said FDR was working for Hitler, but there's legitimate reason to suspect that this president is on the side of ISIS. I never knew that anyone accused Jefferson of working for the opposing military force. And yet there's enough suspicion in this country amongst reasonably skeptical people that this man is either not doing anything, that he, all that he can do, or worse yet, he's in, enabling the enemy. But then again, he falls back again upon his race. This is what he goes to. This is how he got where he is. Again, pulling out the race card. Listen to clip 11. In a big country like this, there's always going to be... Um, Folks who are frustrated, don't like the direction of the country, uh, are concerned about the president. Uh, some of them uh, you know, may not like my policies. Some of them may just 
not like how I walk <laughs> or, or, uh, or my big ears or, you know, so, so, I mean, there's, you know, no, no politician, I think, aspires to a hundred percent approval ratings. Notice again how he tries to wrap himself in legitimate criticism of a president. He knows darn well that's not what this is about. He knows he has failed us. He knows that most thinking people uh, distrust him to their core. Every survival instinct and every man with a brain that I know of thinks he is actually working for the enemy. I mean intelligent people, businessmen, retired businessmen, military, retired military, police, retired police, every one of them who has a brain and a survival aptitude, knows that this man is a threat to their existential existence. And then he goes on again to attack... I can play more and more in this speech. This is before NOR, National Obama Radio, which has hit a new low. A new low of National Obama Radio. Why we're funding this is beyond me. When we have a Republican majority, they could cut the funding yesterday and throw all these bums out of work. Let's see if they can get a job in commercial radio. Let's see if any one of these people pulling down five, $600,000 a year in NPR could get a job in commercial radio and last a day. Let's see how long they last. They couldn't even get a job producing sound bites for me. <clears throat> but they exist for one reason only, to be an arm of the Hillary uh, David Axelrod propaganda machine. So what are we going to do about it? We, first, we've got to talk about it. What else can we do about it? That's all. Here's another little story for you to show the insanity of Barack Obama and the people around them. Are you ready? Hold on to your desk. I'm giving you your Christmas early. Yeah, I'm giving you the Christmas present Monday. If, if you're choking on the horror of this country under this man, FDA eases restrictions on blood donations from gay men. ABC News, December 21. The nation's three-decade-old ban on blood donations from gay and bisexual men was formally lifted Monday, but major restrictions will continue to limit who can give blood. The so-called FDA said it is replacing a lifetime ban with a new policy barring donations from men who have had sex with a man in the previous year. Now, how are they going to monitor that? You get a, a guy comes in and says, you have sex with a man in the last year? No, okay, give me the blood. That's very valid. That's a valid medical decision. Gay rights fanatics said the new policy is a step in the right direction, but falls short. David Stacy of the Human Rights Campaign, the largest U.S. gay rights group, said, this stigmatizes gay and bisexual men. It simply cannot be justified in light of current scientific research and updated blood screening technology. Oh, is that true? That's not true. And I'll prove it to you. The FDA considered eliminating all restrictions on blood donations from gay and bisexual men but concluded that that would increase the transmission of HIV through the blood supply by 400%. So even the FDA, as controlled as it is by this leftist government, said that if you took away all restrictions on blood donations from gays, that would increase the transmission of HIV through the blood supply by 400%. And he said that that's not acceptable. So while U.S. blood donations are screened for HIV... There is a 10-day window, roughly, between initial infection and when the virus can be detected by current testing techniques. Do you follow that? Do you understand that? So now they're going to say to man, have you had sex with another man? No, no. Has it been a year? Yeah, all right, come up. Let's have your blood. Let me have your blood right now. The switch in policy will increase the U.S. blood supply by 2% to 4% by making 2 million additional men eligible to donate, according to previous research by UCLA. By UCLA. Now you know why many people, I don't know if you know this, but people with money, did, did you know this? L let, me, uh, let me put it another way. Do you know that wealthy people have private blood supplies, private blood banks? You didn't know that. That's a little secret you don't know about. You don't know about that. Many wealthy people have funded their own blood banks inside hospitals in case they're ever having the need a transfusion from an accident or surgery. Either they've given their own blood or their families go in and give blood, and it's only for their family's use. Did you know that? See, they don't really want a down-and-out junkie's blood. For some reason, there's a certain, uh, I guess it's racism and stigmas in their mind. They really don't want blood from a junkie with AIDS or a junkie with tuberculosis. For some reason, they're that uh, backwards. So, they're, they're, this, you know, there's this a throwback mentality to not trust the blood supply. If, after all, in Obama's America, everything is equal and everyone is equal. 
And even if the blood is contaminated, it's equal to uncontaminated blood because that's the way 